This is a video about the finite intersection property and then how it relates to compactness. So we're going to say that a family, uh, fancy or script A, I'll say fancy and script kind of interchangeably. So a family, fancy A of subsets of a given set has this thing called the finite intersection property if the following thing always happens. Whenever fancy A prime is some finite subcollection of fancy A, then the intersection of all things in fancy A prime has to be non-empty. So let's try and look at an example. So let's say that my fancy A is the set of all intervals um, A to infinity, where I'm including the left endpoint, and A is just a real number. This set of intervals, this collection A, has the finite intersection property. So let's talk about why. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to look at any time that I have a finite subcollection of fancy A here, is the intersection of all those always not empty? Well, any finite subcollection fancy a prime of these intervals, you're just taking finitely many intervals that look like this. And so, well, we should be able to list them out. And what we could also do is we could say, relabel the left endpoints if necessary. So without loss of generality, I'm gonna assume that a1 is a number that's less than or equal to a2 and so on. So that the way I've written this thing, uh, these kind of go in like increasing order. So let me draw you a picture. So I'm on the real line and here's my picture of what these intervals look like. So I've got, this is my finite subcollection say. And so of course, like there, maybe there's some stuff going on in the middle, but the point is that's all going on here. I'm just gonna draw those three for you. So what are we supposed to do? If I go back and look up here, for any one of these finite subcollections I look at, is it true that the intersection of all uh, of those finitely many sets is not empty? Well, what would the intersection of these be? Well, I see that the points that are contained in all of these intervals would be exactly the pink right there. And so if I wrote that down, that looks like that. So what do we just do? Well, if any finite subcollection of fancy A has to look like that, we could always use this argument to conclude that the intersection of finitely many of these sets has to be non-empty. Therefore, that is why this collection has the finite intersection property. Now, what can be a little bit confusing or tricky, make sure you read the definition of the finite intersection property carefully. So A, fancy A here, it might have this finite intersection property, but it's still possible that if I took the intersection of all the sets that are in fancy A, then that could be empty. So let's look at my same example here. So fancy A is all these intervals on the real line, including the left endpoint. So we just showed that this A has the finite intersection property. In other words, if I took finitely many of these intervals at a time, found their intersection, it's always not empty. That was the example above. But if you just took the intersection of all of these intervals, not finitely many at a time, just all of them, you would get the empty set. And so how come, in case we can't see that, well, by way of contradiction, let's say you had a real number x that is in every single a, every single interval a, so when I say this regular a here, I mean one of these particular intervals, for every single interval in this set fancy a here. So what would that mean? Well, let's draw a picture. That means that real number x has to be in the interval x plus one to infinity. Right, this green x plus one to infinity, it's got this form, therefore that green is a member of my collection fancy A. So therefore somehow that orange has to be in the green set, which look, that's impossible. So that's a contradiction. Therefore um, this intersection has to be empty. Now let's tie this uh, finite intersection property into the concept of um, what it means for a topological space to be compact. So to remind you of compactness, a topological space X with topology T is compact if every open cover of X has a finite subcover. So what we're gonna do is kind of twist this around a little bit and explore what else we can say with that. So let's say that I've got a space X with topology T that makes it compact. So if it's compact, let's suppose that I had some collection of open sets, that's kind of a fast way to say that there. So some collection fancy U of T, let's say that no finite subcollection of fancy U actually covers X. Well, wait a minute, if I'm supposing that X is compact, I should always be able to find a finite subcover that covers X. So what does that mean? If I can't find one for this fancy U, well then U just must not be a cover for X at all. And again, that's because we're assuming that X is compact while we're kind of doing our musings here. Well, if I was gonna say that with my math words, what's it mean to say that fancy U is not a cover of X? With my math words, that says, well, the union of all things in fancy U, so this is supposed to be my regular U, that's in fancy or script U, well, that doesn't cover X, that means that the union of all those doesn't equal X. Let's take complements of both sides of this uh, kind of non-equation here. 
Oh, one more thing too. Remember, U is a collection from my topology. That means that I could describe all of its elements with this word open, all right? So these are all elements of T as well. So all these U's are open. So if I use, if I take complements of both sides, that tells me that the complement of this union has to be non-empty. And now what we'll do is we'll rewrite this side with one of De Morgan's laws, which says that the intersection of X minus U for all U in the uh, cover U uh, is non-empty. Now, if this U is open, what can we say about the complement X minus U? You got it. They're closed. So what do we have then? We have that, um, in this case, the intersection of all of these closed sets here has to be non-empty. So let's try to kind of tie together, what did we just try to show? We just kind of secretly, maybe it's not super obvious, we just secretly kind of related this finite intersection property to the concept of compactness. And that's a big theorem. So a way to tell if a space is compact, another characterization of compactness. So XT is compact if and only if every collection, fancy A, of closed subsets of X that has the finite intersection property also has a non-empty intersection. What I want to do is that last part's kind of a mouthful. So what does, what does this part say? What is this in blue really saying to you in symbols? What I'm saying to you is if it's the case that's the intersection of all A in some finite subcollection uh, is non-empty, for no matter what finite subcollection that you took of A here, then it must also be the case that the intersection of all the things in your family has to be non-empty. And that's supposed to be kind of reminding you of what was the example that we covered towards the beginning of the video. Well, if my topological space is the real line with the usual topology, then this is not compact. And what I'll try to do is I'll try to explain why it's not compact using this new theorem. So what we saw, what we did in our examples earlier, was we said that this fancy A of all of these closed intervals, right? These are closed uh, with the usual topology. Um, we saw that this is a collection of closed subsets and that this collection had the finite intersection property, right? If I took finitely many of these intervals, they got non-empty non -empty intersection. But what else did we see? Well, we also saw that when you just take the intersection of all intervals in this set, it's got to be empty. Well, wait a minute. If you had a compact space, then what does this say here? The intersection of all the things also has to be non-empty. Well, that didn't happen here, right? We got that it's empty. So therefore, that means that your space must not be compact. Or I guess the space of real numbers must not be compact.